set free, healed, delivered, whatever they need, let them accept you, Lord Jesus Christ, your, as a precious, wonderful Savior. In your precious name we do pray. Amen. Take your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 20. I also have it on the screen. And if you'll look next to you in the pew, you'll find all these scriptures. I want you to have these scriptures. And a lot of times what I do when God gives them to me, I'll print them out for you because I know there's no way you can flip and turn that, that, that much. But there's a lot of scriptures today on purpose for you to bring with you. Most of you have heard either Gary teach or Steve teach or me preach and teach on a lot of what I'm fixing to show you today. He said, then what are you going to preach again on it for? Because God said so. <laughs> um, it's not what you think you've already heard or know. It's the order that it goes in. This week, God was showing me, I was praying to God to show me what he wanted me to preach on. Because I cannot just get up and just preach whatever I want to. That's not scripture. That ain't biblical. You say, well, it's just the Bible. Well, I can take anything out of the Bible and just start preaching it. But if that's not what God wants you to hear at that time, that's you doing it, not the Spirit doing it. Does that make any sense? You don't want to hear a joke in a three-point sermon. That's what most churches are given today. And they're already gone out here eating. They've already been, you know, everybody's already in the restaurants. Some folks are already at home in the bed already, taking a nap because they've given God their hour. I'm just trying to get you to understand this church is not about that. This church is a training ground. This church is a freedom, praise, worship. If you're hungry and you want to grow, I promise you, you can and you will if you desire it. Amen? But I want to show you something today that some has heard some of this teaching, some have never heard any of it. Some heard, has heard bits and pieces of it. But you, some have probably never heard it put the way I'm fixing to show you today, in order. I heard numbers brought out earlier, and, and, and she's exactly right. Numbers has powerful, powerful meanings. Most folks don't know that, and we miss it because it's hidden revelation in God's Word. Amen? And you're not going to get it by studying with this. You're only going to get it by a revelation from the Spirit of God. So I want to show you some things about there were six hours of crucifixion on the cross. And certain things happen that most folks don't realize. Yeah, he died and yeah, he rose. whole lot more to it than that. And I want you to see some things here that you need to understand because from the beginning and to the end, a door has opened for you that you might not realize has been opened. And I want you to get a hold of this because God revealed this in deeper to me. First of all, let's clear up something. Look at Matthew chapter 20, starting in verses 17 through 19. I want to make sure you understand this. I have heard this growing up all my life, that the mean old Jews killed Jesus. Uh, we've even been accused up here at this church of being a Jewish synagogue. Why is that? Because I teach the seven feasts. It's not Jewish feasts, it's the Lord's feasts. The Jews who so happen to... Uh, know these feasts and keep these feasts. They also know the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. The problem we got in America is, is we're so spiritually ignorant that we have made up our own religions and some of them we think God's going to meet us halfway. God's going to come down and meet us halfway and say, well, that's okay, you got, you got most of it right. How dumb are we? God's not doing that. God is a king, hallelujah. God has his ways. And God's not changing His ways to suit your ways or my ways. God says you are to learn of me. And the only way you can do that is to break religion of man and get into the Word of God. Hallelujah. So first of all, what you've probably been told growing up is wrong if you've been told the Jews killed Jesus. That's just not the Bible. Well, yes it is. Well, let's see what the Bible really says about it. Okay, amen. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Matthew 20, starting in verses 17, it says, And Jesus, going uh, up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said unto them, and watch this, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man, underline that, shall be betrayed unto the chief priest and to the scribes. Now, who is the chief priest and scribes? Is that Jewish people? Yes. Watch. And they shall, underline this next phrase, condemn 
him to death. Underline this. Now they condemned him to death. Hallelujah. Look at verses 19. And it says that they shall deliver him to who? They delivered him to the Gentiles, for the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to kill him, crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. So who literally killed Jesus? Now I want you to watch this. This is not really a trick question. There's a reason why it's done this way. Most folks don't understand this. Most folks miss what's going on here. The Gentiles want to sit here with this highfalutin uh, 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 stigmatism of, well, they killed my Jesus. They're mean people. They scourged him. They beat him. Poor Jesus. How ignorant is that? Do you not realize if he did not go to the cross, if he was not marred more than any other man, you and I have no hope of ever being saved. But the reason we have been brainwashed into thinking like that is because of the law of man sets here. We think that somehow we can please God about what we do and we see it from a, a perspective of he should have died. Honey, if he didn't die, you and I don't have a choice. You know, can never go to heaven, no chance for us whatsoever, if this did not happen the way that it did. The Jews had to condemn him to death, and the Gentiles had to carry it out. Why? Because it takes both Jews and Gentiles both to come against him, for him to die for both to turn it around. Hallelujah. Most folks miss this. To understand, none of them really killed him. He laid his own life down. We'll get into that more in a minute. But he allowed them to participate in his death. He allowed the Jews and the Gentiles to do it. Hallelujah. This stupid, crazy religious teaching is it was Jews had their time a long time ago and they messed it up. So God turns and gives it to the, to the Gentiles. Totally have missed what the Bible's even talking about. It's because they don't understand biblical numbers. They don't understand dispensations of time. I'm going to show it to you in just one minute. They don't understand the eight covenants. They have no idea about the seven feasts. They have no idea why he arose on the third day. Why not the second day? Why not the fourth day? Why the third? Have no idea because we're so into man's ways. Trying to please God by what we do. You think if you come to church for 50 years and you're a Sunday school teacher and you brainwash people in Sunday school for some Sunday school material for 50 years, you've done God a favor. You've not done God a favor. You've hurt people. God don't care if you've been a deacon for 50 years or a pastor for 50 years or grandpa bought a pew or not. Who cares? Who cares whose name's on, a, on the dumb stained glass windows? Nobody cares about that. God surely don't. But we get so involved in our religion that we've totally missed God. And I want to show you some things here that will really help you. Hallelujah. How many understands here what it's talking about, about Son of Man? Now, y'all have heard me teach on this before. Son of God is Christ. Son of Man is Jesus. You can put it like this. Son of Man, Jesus is his racial name. This is his title upon the earth. What you'll find is everywhere in Scripture where it talks about Jesus is always in this fear and this, this natural world. It's never talking about heaven. You're never going to find ever, ever where the Jesus that walked the earth is found in heaven before he even came to the earth. It's not written nowhere. You'll find the Son of God. You'll find Christ. You'll find Yahweh. You'll find all the wonderful names of God, but you're not going to find Jesus. Why? Because he didn't show up until he was birthed out through Mary. Hallelujah. And the angels come and said, his name shall be what? Emmanuel. God with you. He's fully on the earth now. He's all God, all man. We so focus on the natural, we miss the spiritual. But Jesus, the Son of Man, came and he's speaking of what he's fixing to take place on the cross to the Jews and about the Gentiles. Are y'all seeing this, anybody? He spoke seven statements. And now you're right about the completion and perfection. Seven is completeness as three goes with the same thing. But what it's talking about, it is talking about 
perfection, completeness. It is done. It is finished. That's what it's worth talking about. Now understand, he spoke seven statements on the cross, not just because it's a good thing to do. And he suffered six hours on the cross, not just because it's the right thing to do. No, there's a spiritual meaning there that you need to get that Satan don't want you to know. He don't want you to understand what was spoken. He don't want you to understand that six hours means some. One out of five hours, one out of four hours. I want you to see this, guys. It's so powerful. Because you are perfect and you are complete in Christ. I don't care what what religion tells you. I don't care what Satan tries to tell you. Now listen, the very first three statements he spoke on the cross are dealing with other people and other situations. The last four is dealing with himself. And there's a spiritual meaning behind this. I want to make sure that you grab a hold of this. First of all, let's kind of look at some numbers. What does five mean? Anybody know what five means? Grace. What does eight mean? New beginning. Okay. What do you think God took Noah and his family with eight people and closed them up in an ark? Because all eight people starts a new beginning. Okay. Seven goes back to perfection and completeness. No. What does six mean? Man. You're right. Now, turn it around. Six does mean man, but how many covenants are in the Bible? Almost right. Eight. How many dispensations? You said it. Seven. Now, I'm showing you this for a reason. You said, what does that got to do anything? Everything. Because you got to go into spiritual numbers, and I'm going to be showing you as, as we go through this, six hours on a cross... How many here knows what dispensation we're in right now? We're in grace, but what number is it? It's six. I thought six was man, or five was man. Five, there was five was grace and six was man. It is. Five is grace, six is man, but we're in the dispensation of time of called grace, and there's a reason why we're there. But I want to show you biblically what it means because of number seven is fixed to happen. Guys, do you not realize if God could continue on with his message writing the word, your names could be written in here? Do you not realize that Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham and all of these all operated during certain dispensations of time and right now you're in one and my question to you, do you have any idea why you're even in dispensation of time that you're in and what you're supposed to be doing here? Most of us don't know that, do we? Let's get deeper and look at this. Watch. The very first thing that he says on the cross. Now watch this. Then we're going to break this down. So get a hold of this. Turn over to Luke 23. Luke 23. I want you to get a hold of this. Luke 23, starting in verses 34. He goes to the cross, verses 34 and 35 says this. Then Jesus said, Father, now notice he's not speaking to God. As I've told you before, you're not supposed to be praying to God. Well, I can't believe a pastor's up there telling folks not not to be praying to God. Well, that's because those folks who says they don't have a clue what they're talking about. The only prayer that I can pray to God is when I'm not born again and I'm not saved and I'm in darkness and I'm of the world. The only prayer that, quote, God will listen to is, God help me. And that's when the Holy Ghost has come and draws you to the door, which is Jesus. You don't pray to God. Why? You pray to the Father. Big difference. Well, they're, they're the same. Really? Well, let's say here. I am a daddy, this is Father's Day, and I am a husband to my wife, and I'm a pastor to you. Same person, but is it the same thing? No. I don't love my kids the way I love my wife. That's sick. And I don't love you the way I love my kids and my wife. You cannot. It's a different, it's a different role. Most folks don't have no idea about what I'm even talking about here. Father and God is different. God is dealing with judgment. Father is dealing with a relationship. Understand how important this is. 
He taught you how to pray, remember? Here's, teach us how to pray, Jesus, okay? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He didn't say, oh God, am I good enough? Oh God, oh I'm so sorry, I'm begging. Oh please don't kill me and shoot me down because I did this. That's, that's religion has nothing to do with God. He's not sending hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes to come and get you. That's the devil. It has nothing to do with God. But yet religion teaches you all this garbage because he, listen, Satan don't want you to know what Jesus Christ paid for on the cross. I want you to hear the truth. Look at what it says in Luke 23, verses 34 again. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lot. It wasn't like God's up there saying, I can't believe this. They're trying to kill my son, Jesus. Not mean people. No, they was part of the plan. God had to get the Jews and the Gentiles both to condemn him and to kill him. That was part of God's plan. Are y'all not seeing this, anybody? Listen, when he's speaking to the Father, he's speaking in the Spirit. Why? What is God? He is the Spirit. And watch this. Verses uh, 35, this is the question that's always been asked all through Scripture, and this is the reason why God sent me here to this dark, Baptist, broken church five years ago. I didn't want to come. I said, God, please don't send me there. I don't want to go. But God said, yes, you're going. Why? I had no idea that this church was sitting in center point. This church was sitting here with curses attached to it from 50 and 75 and 100 years ago. From stupid clubs and associations and people from dark curses that has has infiltrated families. You can look at most people's lives around here and their kids are dead. Their grandkids are dead. Why? The curse of Satan. They're living in misery. They're poor. They're hurting. Why? I'm going to show you why. Because they knew about a Jesus, but they did not know the Christ. And you will not go to heaven. And you will not get born again. And you will not get healed. And you will not be set free without the Christ. You want to hear this? The Christ is the life. The Christ is the light. The Christ is the power of Almighty God. That is the Son of God. Look at what it says here in verses 35. It says, And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if, I love the word if, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God, Let me tell you something. The very question that was asked to Peter, who does men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Honey, if you can't answer that question, you will not go to heaven. You can't just worship a black Jesus or a white, blue-eyed Jesus or a Baptist Jesus or a Methodist Jesus or an American Jesus and make it up however you want to, and say, I believe, I believe, I'm going to go to heaven. No, you'll bust hell wide open. But hear me on this. If there's not been a change inside here, and if it's not been revealed to you, revelation, as it was to Peter, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. You will not go to heaven. You'll be left here during the tribulation and the great tribulation. I'm just pointing it out there straight to you because I love you. you got to know this. This is what has not been preached in this area. This is what's been dark in this area. And these people up here who's, who's praising and loving and, and give a testimony, the are doing that because the Christ is inside them. They have a relationship with the Father through Christ. Hallelujah. And it took Jesus, Son of Man, to suffer for six hours on the cross to make that happen. Hallelujah. Is anybody seeing this? I tell you, I get excited. Excited about God's Word. Look at the third thing that he said. Now notice, this, listen to this now. It's on purpose. The very first three statements he spoke from the cross 
was spoken from 9 a.m. until noon on purpose. The very first three. And notice what's taking place here. He's talking about others. He's going to others. Father, forgive them. I want you to watch this. Look over at Luke. This is the second one. Look at Luke 23 and look at um, verses 39 first. Here it is again. The question is coming right back up again. Look at what it says. And one of the malefactors, which about two things on the cross, which were hang railed on him, saying, If thou be what? The Christ, save thyself and save us. Now you've already had the people ask the very same question. Nay, had the two, two things on the cross asking the very same question. One of them was blinded and did not see inside Jesus of who he was in his kingdom. And he dies and goes to hell. The other one was able to have revelation of who he was, and he believed. And look at what he says in verses 40, or actually verses 40 and 41. I don't have it before you. He says to this other thief, leave him alone. We, we deserve this death, but he don't. And look at what, what verse 42 says, what Jesus Christ says to him. And he said, in, he said unto Jesus the Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Why are we a kingdom focused church? Because the kingdom is Christ. And I want to go to heaven and I want to do his will. I'm not going to sit here and give you my version of a, of a, of a Jesus. That's why. So shocking. Some people get so offended with that. We've been accused. This is no longer a Baptist church. It's a Jewish synagogue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's Jewish you talk, but hallelujah. They don't know Romans 2.29, do they? Have no idea. Spiritual ignorance. But why? Because Christ is not in them. But Jesus, in their mind, they say, I believe. It's called the apostate church. And the apostate church must be open and revealed before the end times. God will separate with a sword, light and darkness. Wheat and tares grow up together. He separates it. What side will you be on? Either the Christ is in you or not. Is anybody seeing this? Look at verses um, 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today... Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, just real quickly before I move on, most of you guys know this. I've already taught this so many times. And those who've been coming here for five years probably know it by heart, but some of you don't. So I just want to make sure you understand this so you don't get all confused. And those who already do know it, hear it again and understand how wonderful it is. When people from the Old Testament, Adam and Eve, all the way up to Jesus' time, when they died, they could not go to heaven. If you could go to heaven before Jesus' time, there was no need for Jesus. So God created a, par- a, a, a place called Abraham's bosom or paradise. It's actually in the center of the earth. Read Luke 16, you'll find it. And you'll find to where on one side was Hades or hell, and there's different compartments there. There's a great gulf in the middle. And on the other side, the Bible says, it's paradise or Abraham's bosom. And all the people who was not just wonderful, good people, no. All the people who used blood sacrifices to have their sins covered because God required that, all those people got to go to paradise or Abraham's bosom. This is God himself took animal skins and killed the animals and covered their nakedness up of Adam and Eve, hallelujah, with animal skins full of blood as the very first blood sacrifice to cover sins, but it did not take away the sin until Jesus become the lamb to, to, to use his self as in place of the animal because the spiritual part is Christ, which is the lion. You've heard of the lion and the lamb laying down together? That's what it's talking about. Is anybody seeing this? So all the folks before Jesus Christ had gone to paradise or Abraham's bosom. Jesus is saying right here, today, thief, because your eyes have been opened up, you shall be with me not in heaven, but in paradise. 
He dies on the cross, the Bible says. And it says that he descended to the lower parts of the earth and took the captivity captive. He took all those people who was waiting for the lamb to shed his blood. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that what happened? He, he, he went there and he said he arose. Now listen to this. This is the Christ part. When it, Listen, it's so powerful. When he went there, he took all the ones, all the spirits in prison. And the Bible says that he shed his blood for them when they accepted Christ, guess where they got to go? Out of Abraham's bosom, out of paradise. Now paradise has moved to the third heaven. Y'all know there's three heavens. I hope, I hope you know that. He's going to the third heaven. He's sitting on the right-hand side of the Father. He poured his blood out there on the mercy seat. Hallelujah. That's what I was talking about when God tears the, the veil from top to bottom. And now, answer from the body is what? Present with the Lord. So when you die now, where do you go? You do not go to paradise or Abraham's bosom. You go straight to be with the Lord in the third heaven. Hallelujah. And then at the end when he comes back, your spirit will come back with him. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air. And we'll get resurrected new bodies as Jesus got. Because that Jesus is not sitting in heaven right now. The Christ is with a new resurrected body. Hallelujah. Is anybody seeing this? I know there's a whole lot to give y'all at once, but you got to understand why he died on the cross. Now, I've taught that for a long time, so that's just kind of a recap. There's a whole lot more to it. But let's go deeper. Look at number three of why he sailed on the cross. This is, this is also even deeper here. Most folks know this in this church as well. John 19, verses 26 and 27 says this. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, this is a third statement now, and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her as his own. Now why in the world would he do such a thing? Well, he loved her. Yes, he did love her. Hallelujah, he did. He's taking care of her. But it's more than that. What's the spiritual meaning of why he did this? Because the mother was the seed carrier. What? It goes back to Genesis 3.15. Read it. I don't have it up here. Just mark it down and read it. It goes back to when Satan has tricked Adam and Eve. And now the curse is on the earth. And notice he says this on purpose because of the curse. What do you mean? The curse came in through Satan on the earth. Now watch this. And he talked to Satan and he, he said, I'm going to separate thy seed from her seed. Who's her seed? He's talking about his mother. What are you talking about his mother? God took his spiritual seed, the Christ, the Son of God, and kept that spiritual seed going all the way through eight covenants in the Bible. Even took and put it inside Noah's family, put it upon the ark and closed up the ark and flooded the whole earth so he could protect that seed. And then it keeps going and going and going until finally the seed ends up where God takes his Holy Spirit and overshadows Mary, his mother, and puts that spiritual seed into his mother. So his mother could birth out that seed with a covering called Jesus, hallelujah, into this atmosphere, into this world, so he could die for us, hallelujah, to reverse it right back to heaven so we have a way to get there. Is anybody seeing this? Anybody? It's a whole lot of mouthful, but that's what I was talking about. That's why he spoke to his mother the way he did. It was because he just being nice. Y'all seen this, Anybody? Anybody? Now, because of that, let's go now to the fourth thing he spoke. Now, all of a sudden, now, it changes over now. It goes from 9 a.m. to noon. Now, at noon, from noon until 3 p.m., the last four things are spoken. And those reasons, now, this is just going to get deep. So y'all hold on to your hats here. Now, watch this. So powerful. Matthew 27, verses 45 and 46, watch what it says. Now, we've already gone over the very first three, hallelujah, right? Have y'all seen the spiritual understanding of why he talked to his mother, the seed carrier? Can you see why he said, forgive them? Can y'all see all this? 
I want you to get a hold of this. Look at, look at uh, number four. Matthew 27, which is 45, 46. Now from the sixth, sixth hour, there was darkness. I don't know the word darkness. Over all the land and to the ninth hour. Now notice what took place. After he spoke the very first three statements for others, darkness comes in. Darkness is not from God. What do you mean, Greg? Go back to the very beginning of the Bible and you will find to where it says that the earth was without form and void and darkness covered the deep. That was not from God. When God completes, completes or creates something, it is perfect, it is complete, it is done. Those who study out their Bibles know that Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to verses 2, there is a judgment that took place because of Satan, because of demons, because of fallen angels, because of him. Hear me on this. And there is a judgment upon the earth at the very beginning. Most folks don't even know that. That's where the darkness comes in. And then God says, here's judgment, here's darkness, now we're going to bring in the light. I'm going to separate the light from the darkness. Hallelujah. The wheat from the tear. The religious from the spiritual. It don't do you any good for folks to walk up to you and say, well, what religion are you? Well, I'm of this, I'm of that, I'm of this. That's the same thing over here in darkness. It's saying, so what rank are you inside the demonic file? I'm a private or I'm a general. That's all you're saying. That's all it means. Because God did not create religion of man. He had nothing to do with it. It's all from Satan. But hear me on that. Why I, how can I say that? Because anything that separates man is not from God. God pulls the church body together. Hallelujah. No, not, not some smorgasbord of, of you choosing what you think is right. Are y'all seeing this, anybody? Look at what it says again. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, and the watches, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Alama Sabathini, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Poor Jesus. No, you missed it. Notice in the very beginning, I showed you, he said, Father, forgive them. He's speaking speech to his father. His father never come against him. His father never forsook him. Never. That's why he's crying out to God. What does all this mean? There's a whole bunch of spiritual messages here. So I want to make sure you get a hold of the right one, please. Flip over to Psalms 22. Psalms 22. Now, I'm going to read this to you quickly, but I want you to go back and study it for yourself deeper. Understand how important this is. When he is on the cross, hanging between earth and heaven, he's right in the middle of two spheres, or the natural and the spiritual. The Holy Ghost cannot partake in the sin, so the Holy Spirit withdrew himself from Jesus. The Father cannot look upon sin. Remember the veil? If you go in God's presence with sin, you die. That's what the ark's talking about. So God can't look upon sin. So what does he do? The Father turns his face and sends his judgment through God, same person as daddy, listen, as daddy, as husband, as pastor, just like me, different roles. Different roles. The father loves him. He loved, he loved him so much because he loved you. How many here knows to get tomatoes, you have to plant what? Seeds, oranges, apples, seeds. See, the spiritual seed is the son of God. He had to plant that spiritual seed so that spiritual seed could come into Jesus and die so he could have many sons. You're not just some little guy on the side of a here, honey. You're a son of God. Your position is sonship. Hallelujah. You better get a hold of this, guys. Now watch this. Most folks miss this. 
Turn over to Psalms 22, starting in verses 1. Here it is. In the, in the Jewish ways, they didn't have Bibles like you and I've got. I, can't, I could tell you to turn to Matthew 25 or Matthew 6, 33, read all that. They couldn't do that. For me to tell you where to turn in a scroll, I had to start quoting from where I want you to start reading at in the scrolls. What do you think Jesus Christ was doing here? He's saying, listen, I am fulfilling this right here in front of your faces. So he now starts quoting a prophecy saying he has fulfilled this. This goes back to Psalms 22. Read Psalms 22 and see what it sounds like to you. Watch this. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Does it not sound familiar? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Now watch this. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. In the night season, I am, I am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, thou trusted, and thou didst de- deliver them. Thou cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee, now watch this, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, he says. And this, is what is, this is when the judgment, darkness, the curse is coming upon Jesus. Remember, now he's sitting here taking it all upon himself on purpose. Now watch. I am a worm and no man a reproach of men and despised of people. All they that see me, watch this. To uh, laugh me to scorn, they shoot out the lip, they shake their heads, saying, He trusted on the Lord that He would deliver him, let him deliver him, seeing He delighted in him. But thou art He that took me out of the womb. It's going back to Mary. Thou didst uh, make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee, now watch this, from the womb. Thou art my God and and, and for my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. There is none to help. Why? The Holy Ghost withdrew himself on purpose. Now watch this, guys. Get a hold of what he did for you. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. If you go back and study this out, we'll go back to demonic spirits. How many here's our thought demons? Anybody ever fought demons? They're very real. Very real. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a difference between demons and Satan himself. I have personally been attacked by Satan himself twice. He tried to kill me. I've been attacked by demonic spirits many a times. There are difference in warfare there. You got to know how to operate in that warfare. But let me tell you something, guys. When you're at home at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and demonic spirits are coming against your family, you don't have to go call Gary or myself. Get up in the name of Jesus Christ and speak his name and plead the blood of Jesus Christ. You've got authority. You sit in heavenly places in Christ on the right-hand side of the Father in the third heaven. You're in Christ and he is in you. Take your position. Take your authority. Open up your will. Open up your testament and say, God says and speak it. Because you don't know what I did. It doesn't matter what you did. You don't know what I did. Listen, it's not about what you do. It's about what he did. That's why he died on the cross for you. He's opening up doors for you. Hallelujah. Is anybody seeing this? Look at what it says. Let's finish, let's finish, finish this out right quick. Verses 13. They gaped upon me with their mouths. Now picture Jesus Christ dying on the cross. And picture him descending into hell. Well, he didn't go to hell. Yes, he did. He went to hell for you. Yes, he did. Now watch this. They get upon me with their mouths and raving and roaring lion. Now, who walks around as a roaring lion? Who here knows? Satan. Who is the true lion? Christ. I am poured out like water, he says. And all my bones are out of joint. How many here knows on the, on the cross his bones were never broken but out of joint? Now watch this. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a postured, and my tongue cleave to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. Yes, it's exactly what he did. On purpose, hallelujah. 
For dogs have compassed me. It goes back to demonic spirits. The assembly of wicked have enclosed me. They've pierced my hands and my feet. I, listen to this, I may tell all of my bones, they look and they stare upon me. He was more and more than any other man. They have parted my garments among them. They cast lots upon my vesture. But he, but be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength, has thee to help me deliver my soul, and align this, from the, from the sword, the darling of the power of the dog. It goes back to Satan. How many have ever heard of the, of the dog star? Anybody? Who's ever heard of the Eastern Star? Okay, Eastern Star is a dog star. Eastern Star is not a good thing, I promise you. Eastern Star goes back to demonic, an upside down star, pointed down with a goat's head in the middle of it. Who's ever heard, heard, of, the, heard of the dog days of summer? It gets hot. Okay, that's what it's, what it's coming back to. It's what it's talking about here. It goes back to, to, to demons. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Is everybody seeing this? I'm going to stop right there. Why? Because in verses 22, it changes over. Keep reading on yourself later on. It goes from the death to the resurrection. It changes the whole entire chapter there back to his resurrection. I want you to get a hold of this, guys, because what he did on the cross for you does matter. Hallelujah. Anybody seeing this? Amen. Okay, look at this now. Look at number um, uh, five. Fifth thing he said on the cross. Now we've already gone from the first three to others to darkness coming in. And now he's dying for you. Hallelujah. Taking on the curse for you. Fifth thing he says is in John 19, 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, he saith, I thirst. Why did he say that for? They gave him vinegar. Now watch this. This is awesome. He said it for a reason, guys. Everything he does is for a reason. He's doing it for your spirit man. He's doing it because look at what John 7, verses 37, 38, and 39 says. In the last day, they, that great day of the feast, I know the word feast, that's one of the seven feasts, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. How many of you thirst for spiritual things? How many of you thirst for Christ? He said, he's trying to show you, if you'll come unto me, the Christ is inside me, he says. Come unto me, those who are thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You will never thirst because he thirsts on the cross for you. Hallelujah. You don't have to be spiritually dead. You don't have to be spiritually deserved. Guys, if you're spiritually dead, you can never spiritually discern the power of Almighty God. And when most churches comes in the door, joke, three-point sermon, sing a few songs from the hymn book, and the watch starts going off, beep, 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 it's time to go eat. And the first thing the pastor says, wrong. String them up and get them out of here and find something else that we, else that we can control. Devil, 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 devil. Demon spirits. And this whole area has been full of this garbage for years. I beg not to come here. God said, you're going to go. You know why he said that to me? Because he knew if he could take a stuttering boy like me who was quiet. When I was at Johnson Elementary, I had to go to a special class because I used to use the words like woad instead of road. And I got scared when a, the teacher asked a question. I couldn't raise my hand. I knew it, the answer. I couldn't raise my hand because I started stuttering. And God took that and burned it out of me. And several years ago, my wife and kids could testify when they found a tumor inside me. My dad had brought me up to the hospital. Couldn't even walk. And there it was. And God burned that sucker out of me. When God does that, when the, when the x-rays show your son has spinal bifida, aborting, they says, kill him. Now he's 12 years old, 220 pounds, 5 foot 10. We didn't kill him. Why? God healed him. And I could go on and on and on and on. When God does that kind of stuff in your life, you really don't care what man thinks of you. 
You really don't care about a 50-year-old, a, 50, a person being in the church for 50 years because a grandpa built the church. Who cares? Because you have experienced the Christ. You have seen beyond what you can see in the natural. You know what he did for you. Hallelujah. And you've got inside you what he has. Listen to me. And what he opened up for you on the cross. Hallelujah. As Gary taught so many times, most folks go to the cross but never look beyond the cross. Never sees what he did for them and what we're supposed to walk at. They go up to the cross and stop. That's only the door. To what? And to see what? Now watch this. Anybody getting this? The sixth thing he says is important. Sixth statement. Remember, six hours on the cross. Again, what dispensation are we in? Grace. Now, I want you to get a hold of this. When did grace start? Anybody know when grace started? Grace started after he died and he arose. The dispensations switched over unto grace. And how many of you guys know that we're almost at the end of grace? You're almost at the end of it. Or why, why do you think demonic spirits are so strong right now? Why do you think the activity and the power of trying to come against you is so strong? Because the dispensation of grace is getting ready to end. Now watch this. John 19, 30. I love this. It says, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, this is called the cry of victory, hallelujah. He said, it is finished. It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. I want you to get a hold of this. Watch. Romans 10, 4. Get a hold of this. Romans 10, 4. For Christ, not Jesus, for Christ, the Son of God, is the end of the law for righteousness. Stop right there. What are you talking about, Greg? Well, the Jews wanted, and God gave them, there was a dispensation called what? Goes back to law, and a covenant back to law. He gave this to them, so a mirror is put in front of their face, and it says, you want me, Greg? You've got to be perfect. Here's what I command. And God puts it there. Jesus came and fulfilled that. Jesus Christ. It says, Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. Why? Because he made you righteous. Honey, I am righteous. I am perfect. According to Matthew 5, 48, you think you're perfect? Listen, my flesh ain't. And not even my soul. It's, not, it's still being worked on. But my spirit is. Body, soul, spirit. My spirit is sealed to the day of redemption. My spirit is perfect in Christ. My spirit man belongs to him. My spirit man, the Bible says, is in his hand, and no one can pluck it out. It belongs to him. That goes back to grace. Grace much more abounds than sin. My soul is my emotions. My mind is still being worked on, renewed every day. My physical body never gets to go to heaven. Ever. I get a new body to go to that place. And guess, and then all of a sudden at the very end, that place comes right, comes right, comes right back here. So awesome. So wonderful. Are y'all getting this, anybody? Look at Galatians 3, 13 and 14, what it says. Christ have redeemed us from, as I read to you, all these curses, the curse of, of the law, all the darkness, all the curse. It says, Christ redeemed us from that curse, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Why? Because he already gave it to the Jews. He's fulfilling it through them. Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of what? The Spirit through faith. What do you think Pentecost is all about? Is anybody seeing this? We're almost done, I promise you. The seventh thing he said, look at this. And this is the part that's awesome. Now, when you get a hold of this, number six, he spoke this, it is finished. But here's the next part. You and I are in the, 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 the period of grace right now. Not long. But you're fixing to go over to an area 
that's supposed to already be inside you. What are you talking about? What's inside you will manifest in the earth. Huh? Hold on to your shoes and watch. Watch. Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, He said, Father. Now He goes back. Remember, He goes from Father to God. Now He's going back to Father again. Unto thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghosts. John 10, 18. Now watch this. No man, he says, no man taketh it from me. The Jews or the Gentiles didn't kill him. He allowed him to participate in his death. But I lay it down of myself, he says. I have power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. This commandment, he says, have I received of my Father. Now, in closing, to wrap all this up, to make sure you get this. Please get a hold of this. I'm actually writing a book on this now. How many of you really want to do God's will? Seriously? Okay? I mean, really. It ain't just working and taking care of your family and just doing the very best you can. God don't want your best. He wants His best through you. And that means you have to give up and let Him do it because your best is never good enough. Y'all understand that? So again, do y'all want to do God's will? Okay, here's how it works. Here's the eight covenants, if you don't have heard them before. The first covenant was called the Edenic covenant. The second was called the Edemic covenant, and that means Adam. The third covenant is the Abrahamic covenant. Then the Mosaic, go back to Moses covenant. The Palestinian covenant. The Davidic or David covenant. And then it goes into what we have right now. How many here knows what we have right now? It's called the New Covenant. He took through Abraham, fulfilled all of that wonderful story in the Bible. He spoke to Abraham in that covenant and grasped us lost Gentiles into the Jews. Hallelujah. And it says, now I've created a brand new one. I'm taking it all and putting it into myself. Hallelujah. And the Bible says it goes into the dispensation of grace. What was the very first dispensation? It was called in it. Be, it, was, it was being innocent in the garden, had no clue what sin was. Then it goes into, after they knew what sin was, that time changed over to conscience. They understood now what's going on. Then God goes into the dispensation of human government. He has this government upon the earth to supposed to reflect what's in heaven. As a moon reflects the sun, we're supposed to be reflecting God's government in heaven because God does have a government. And I promise you, it's not the way the American runs it. I love America. I promise you, I do. I love America. But you ain't going to throw God out and get a whole bunch of folks out and say, well, we don't like what you're saying, and then go throw them out. If you ever, if you ever participate yourself in casting a pastor out of a church, you better be repenting. Because you didn't place them there. Oh, what? I'm just showing you this because I went to the same thing you did, going to churches and we get his resumes, we go listen to him, and we make the decision, and we don't like what he's doing, we kick him out. Usually most churches every two to five years has a, new, has a new pastor. And they're getting younger and younger and younger unless you get a bunch of older folks in a church who wants an older one who don't want to hear what the young guy has to say. Y'all don't see the hand. Come on, let's get real with it. That has nothing to do with God. God says, I place my people who I want them to be. What you're supposed to be doing is praying, hallelujah. Praying, and God will open up the door. And it goes back to human government. Then he goes into a time of called promise. Then he brings in the law. And right now, hallelujah, we're in grace. Thank God for that. The 6,000 years is fixing to end. I want you to watch this. You can look at, you can watch prophecy, you can see all the scriptures. The only thing left to be done before it switches over. How many here knows what's inside you right now? You guys should know this. I've been teaching for five years. The kingdom of God is inside you. The Bible says the kingdom is not here or there or a place over here. It is righteousness. It is peace. It's joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of Almighty God. And it's in the spirit of the Holy Ghost inside you. Hallelujah. It's there. That's why you have a new covenant. Now listen to this. 
The Jews' eyes were blinded so the Gentiles could be granted into that blessing. Hallelujah. And the Bible says when grace, which is meant for Gentiles, really for everybody, but it's opened up for Gentiles, when that period is ended, watch this now, he is going to come. He's going to rapture and call up forth the body, the church. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says the time is going to switch over from grace unto kingdom. The last dispensation, number seven, is called kingdom. He will manifest what's been put inside you and inside me, which is God's holy kingdom. Hallelujah. Come here and knows the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Kingdom of heaven goes back to the Jewish people. Kingdom of God goes back to everything falling under his authority. God, his, listen to this, God has a kingdom. He had his ways. You and I are his son, his priests, kings and priests unto the Father. Is anybody seeing this? You must operate. I love being in America, but I love being in God's kingdom a whole lot more. Why? Because America is falling just like all the rest of them are. Look around, guys. Look at the world. You see all these people, Greece and everybody else, Italy, everybody falling, economies collapsing, things taking place across the world, all going to argue and fighting. Why? Because there's no way in a cursed, dark world under man's ways is ever going to prosper, even though, yes, at first we did have it over to God. We try to found America upon God, and that's a wonderful thing. Or halfway did. Some did, some didn't. Another whole teaching. When you turn against Israel, when you start going against the ones who he started it with, watch out. The curse will start coming on you and the, and the nation. Why? As part of the end times, guys. Oh, God, live in fear. No, live in faith. Honey, you're part of prophecy. You're part of God's word. And my question to you is this. Listen, very kill to this last statement. How many here knows what a dispensation is as far as actual meaning? Watch this. This is as close, I promise you. This is what it means. A period of time during which man, another word, man, not angels, not spirits, but man, physical man, is tested in respect of obedience to some specific revelation of the will of God. What does that mean for me? Here's what it means. During each phase of the Bible, during the seven, distance, the seven dispensations, God would test man, test man, and go to the next dispensation. Jesus, Son of Man, Fulfill God's will and said it is finished during the grace dispensation. We're at the very end of it now. And my question to you is, will you allow what Christ did for you and place the future kingdom inside you? Will you let that be manifested in your life naturally in the earth right now to end this dispensation of grace to go into the next dispensation. Did you catch that? Most folks don't. They just live, they just, they just live from religion to religion to religion to religion. They know Jesus or know about Jesus, have no clue about the Christ. They think Christ is his last name. Have no idea. Satan knows it, but do you? He's done a very good job on both sides of religion from dead things to even false things. All through, people are getting confused. Don't ever put your trust in man. Put your trust in God. So there's a reason why he died for six hours on the cross. There's a reason why those seven statements made. There's a reason why these folks here get excited because of what's inside them. You live by faith, and you know who Christ is. Can we all stand to our feet, please? I hope you got this. I hope you get a hold of what we're talking about here. Because, guys, I promise you this. If you go to your job, you go out here to your neighbors, you even go to your own family, 
And you speak one thing to them. Watch this. If you say, do you know the difference between Jesus and Christ? One is the Son of God, one is the Son of Man. And what lives inside me is not Jesus, but Christ. I promise you, the spirit of anti, not Jesus, anti-Christ, if it's present, will explode. You'll see them oh, get mad. You'll see the religion come out of them. And I've watched it happen over and over and over and over and over. When you start spreading Christ, watch what happens. It is amazing. But all of you who want to have peace, just talk about Jesus. Talk about their Jesus. That person's Jesus. And that person's Jesus. Because they don't, listen, each one has their own one made up in their mind of what it looks like and how he dresses and who he is. If I got that Jesus, the real Jesus, Yahweh was a rabbi. Forgot that part. They forgot that he wore a prayer shawl over head, his head. He forgot that it drugged the ground. He forgot that the, that the uh, woman with the issue of blood rushed out to grab the ends of that called the wings to be healed. They forgot they don't know these things. Why? Because they've been blinded to the Christ. The very reason he came, most folks miss. Now, if you're here today and you're not born again, I can't save you. I know who can. If the Holy Spirit's drawing you, it's not scriptural to say you can be saved whenever you want to. We don't have to have numbers on the walls and look how many God I got souls one to you. That's that's not scriptural. That's not what I was talking about. The Holy Spirit will draw into a pool. You just preach the word. The Holy Spirit's pulling you and drawing you to the door, which is Jesus. The door is going to open up to Christ, which is the kingdom. If you're here today and you're not born again, you can be if the Spirit's drawing you. If you're here today and you have a sickness or a disease, you can be healed right now. I can't heal you. He already has. You can be delivered, set free from addictions, drugs, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. But you've got to move by faith. I know many of you already have, and that's fine. What's God telling, telling you to do right now? don't want to fight spiritual battles. It is very hard to stand. And if you don't stand, then darkness is already won in your life. It hadn't, hadn't, hadn't in Christ's life. But it has, if you don't allow the power of God to move in your life, and you take a stance, who is? Who is? All God's waiting on is for you to say, I'm here, Lord. Use me. Is it easy? No. When friends turn against you, probably. Family, probably. Is it worth it? Yes. It's very worth it. You'll have peace on the inside. Kids are being dumbed down today. Most kids have been, have watched so much TV and computers and things of this nature, they don't know faith and spiritual. It's only about what they can see. Most people think that on TV it actually portrays like there's good and bad evil, and good and bad witches, and good and bad vampires. All these things. That's Satan. I've watched, I've, I've watched uh, people in church have magic shows. I've watched people in church have Ouija boards and crystal balls 
and all this stuff, having no idea that they're inviting demonic spirits, darkness, into the very area of your lives that Jesus Christ paid the price for. He's trying to give you his best, his power. I'm telling you, especially young kids, there is so much power in the Holy Ghost. If you ever experience it, I'm talking about after salvation, after you've got the, the baptism of the Spirit. I'm talking about, and every day as Steve said, an infilling, seeking, 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 seeking the power of God. If you ever, you ever experience it, you'll never go back. You want more and more and more of His presence. Amen. Love you guys. You guys go out and have a wonderful rest of the day with your with your fathers, grandfathers, and moms.